Hi, it's G from Native Speakers Academy and this is the Education News Report. It is Friday the 17th of May 2013 and this article is the case for the abolition of tests in high schools. You can find it at our website. Uh, more details I will give at the end of the article. So here we go. The case for the abolition of tests in high schools. Quote, I do not carry such information in my mind since it is readily available in books. The value of a college education is not the learning of many facts but the training of the mind to think. And that was said by Albert Einstein in response to not knowing the speed of sound as included in the Edison test quoted in the New York Times on the 18th of May 1921. The physical, spiritual and psychological wars inherent in modern society would not be possible without a docile and stagnant general public. This is achieved by means of a scientifically managed system of schooling that trains people from as early an age as possible in conformity and obedience and punishes individuality and constructive creativity. Devoid of any real-life experience and personal responsibility, the students lose their personal identity as the values of the state education institution are forced onto morrow's generation. The most fundamental and absolutely essential element of this meaningless form of psychological child abuse is the incessant classroom test. There are, sadly, as yet, no qualifications for virtue and wisdom. There are no real grades for personal improvement in an area of personal interest, assisting a friend with a complex math problem, or helping your mother prepare the dinner after a long day. This is, of course, not by chance. It cannot be. Yet, we have the best educated minds in the business working night and day to solve the present problems of government education departments and create paths to future solutions. Or so we are told. This is the subtle manipulation of our present analytically abstract society that has completely lost its direction and knows not which way to turn. These are, excuse the tediously obvious pun, testing times. And also times in which, if you attend any high school, you will be unable to avoid tests. On an almost daily basis, there will be some form of assessment designed to mark your progress and check that the well-oiled schematic machine that is the modern timetabled school system is doing its methodical, mechanical job churning out students with few practical skills of any use and a schizophrenic collection of irrelevant facts about outdated memes. Of course there are exceptions to this rule, but in time these beacons of success are either weeded out of the system or drowned in a sea of paperwork that nobody really reads. So, why do we have so many tests? I could answer that now, at the beginning, but I will leave that to a later date as a more important fundamental question would be are these tests of any use at all? I suggest not and there are many good reasons for this opinion that we should and will explore. Tests are of course a complex taken for granted issue that affect almost everyone I have ever met and so there is a simple need to at least probe the logic involved in their almost universal application. From the perspective of intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, to what happens if I remember the answer to a question five minutes after the exam? There is a lot to consider that often passes by unconsidered. So, let's begin. A. 
Tests are all about the past. They are no measure of future success or ability. They focus on a retroactive skill that requires the recall of recent information for a limited period of time only. Besides this, who really knows what skills you will need tomorrow? You may, in effect, prepare and plan for your test in advance, but what next? Correspondingly, the high volume of tests negates any need to consider the future, and it's not as if students have a measure in saying which test could be done when. Where is the student's ability to choose on what they would like to be tested? After all, they, alongside their parents, are the consumer of the education product, and, as has been repeated by thousands of test takers through the ages, all too often, it's just a test of memory and not a practical application of real data or real life skill. Furthermore, we can only marvel at the abject ridiculousness of being constantly told what to learn without any instruction as to how to learn. B. Stress. At certain times, your whole future depends on a percentage written at the top of a page by somebody you barely know. If this does not have any negative side effect on the mind, then I don't know what does. If adults were put through such a rigorous testing process, surely they would complain. So why is it deemed acceptable to do this with our children? Dare I mention the I had to so you have to attitude too often expressed by parents? With such a strong focus on academic success, which is solely graded in assessment results, can we be surprised that students search for more creative ways to obtain good results? Essentially, regular tests, where it is obvious that more emphasis is placed on the end result than the actual process, encourage cheating by both pupils and teachers. After all, a piece of paper is very important, right? And we all want to do our best, right? C. School itself should not be a science laboratory. The techniques of Ivan P. Pavlov and John B. Watson interlaced through a curriculum planned by Burhus F. Skinner might be, in some rare cases, justifiable for crude and cruel experiments on animals, but we really need to set higher values on the children in our communities. Science, now laced with the fervor of religious fanaticism, has always had a close relationship with means and averages, but is this a suitable way to approach the development of young minds which, when regularly, are left to themselves, prove to be highly diverse and flexible, with ample innate ability to solve problems. Students, like animals, are being sorted or even farmed into horizontal groups of knowledge where nobody can help anybody because they are all at the same level and as a result will progress at the pace of only the slowest in the group. Learning is a vertical process. D. Tests have no relationship with the real world. There is a rather large disconnect between the conceptual application of tests in a controlled learning environment and communication and survival in the real world. When the average student graduates, does he really feel that school examinations have prepared him for careful navigation of the labyrinth of social societal, legal, and financial rules that dominate our everyday decision-making processes. How prepared are they to negotiate the fine print of business contracts, mortgage legalese, or interminable changes to accounting regulation? Random historical factoids do little to help us with the important choices in life, such as who to marry, which insurance company to use, or how to rebuild the garden fence, rewire our home electricity circuits, or fix an overflowed toilet. 
We do not ask the local librarian for her results in school, nor the mechanic at the local garage whether or not he passed his final school exams. Furthermore, who really cares? E. It simply takes up too much time. Between the in-school preparation for both educator and student, the in-class delivery and the marking and follow-up reviews, which too often tend to consist only of a glance at the result, followed by a brief emotional response, we could be forgiven for thinking that tests were the be-all and end-all of life. The whole year seems generally focused and planned around the testing process. Just think of the time lost to the management as well as the managed that could have been much better spent in the observation of something new. Let's not forget the homework that eats into any free time a young person might have. In addition, there is also the fact that way deep down inside, we know we will only be required to hold the data for a limited short-term period of time, and so, in many students with whom I have discussed the issue, the brain appears to psychologically dump all the data right after the exam. Just try testing a student on the data at a different time in a different place. Few students can remember after summer what happened before. Then there is also the artificial concept that school is the only place where we are allowed to learn and that has knock-on effects as well. F. All true learning comes from inside the individual. Either from the outside looking in or the inside looking out, it is hard to be objective about the learning process. Science, that great bastion of infinite redefinition, would, at the drop of a hat, have us believing that we have come to a great understanding of the world around us. Yet it seems to constantly rewrite the book of knowledge, adding and removing where it sees fit. The plain truth is that the more we study the world around us, the deeper the rabbit hole appears to be, and the less we are prepared to limit our own shortfalls. This, of course, is just a simplification of the unquestionable reality that no matter how much we learn, we are left with the inevitable conclusion that all we know is that we don't know. Perhaps we should apply this concept to the idea of tests which are, of course, an external application and review over an internal process. And that, if we are, to be truly honest, is no measure of any real value. This information forms a collection of reasoned conclusions from the observations of the effects of tests on students over many years. Modern school tests are little more than an attempt to command and control a complete element of society that, in the worst cases, has the effect of removing all free will from the individual. Not even not to even get started, excuse me, not to even get started on the effects of creativity, motivation and self determination. It is not is it not? <laughs> excuse me, let me read this correctly. Is it not simply amazing how much of what we automatically consider to be an inevitable process on our journey through life has very little real positive effect on our quality of life. Long-form written tests which required more complex cognitive processes and once held some value have long since been replaced in many areas with a multiple guess scenario. What does that teach the next generation? Teaching itself is to learning as speaking is to listening. There is a symbiotic relationship between the two and they can work in harmony, but yet they also may disconnect and have little in common, as is the case here. Learning, which is actually a natural process, is not a process which can be forced, as that will only lead to the application of resistance in return. Children are not horses to be broken, but they are a prototype but they are prototype remodelings of ourselves, flaws and all to be loved and nurtured in a caring environment. 
there is still a fundamental principle in society that schools could not exist without testing, and that itself proves the one or unidimensional perspective we have overlaid into the foundations of our modern education systems. It is a focus which is out of date, irrelevant and harmful to present and future generations. True education is not really that complicated, as it begins and ends with the universal language of love and is elevated with wisdom, not intelligence. As long as those long forgotten first days of mass education where students were marched military style by soldiers at gunpoint from their homes to the schoolhouse, yes that did happen. Did I say as long as? I meant as long with. See I wrote this article myself and I can't even read it. That's just one of those elements of life I suppose. Let's try to read that part again. As with those long forgotten days of mass education where students were marched military style by soldiers at gunpoint from their home to the school, yes that did happen, not only have we lost the very means of true reason in education, but also we have replaced a natural method with a prescribed madness that does not and is never going to work in its present form. And unfortunately for the majority of tired teachers, we have misguidedly turned a once noble profession into a relentless daily lost cause. It is far beyond time to stop, rethink and move on. Any time the destination becomes more important than the process, we are in a race to the bottom. Enough is already more than enough. Let's not perpetuate the tragedy of history and make the same mistakes as our forefathers by placing blind belief in a system that has consistently let down the faithful. Let us make a wiser choice for future generations, remembering, of course, the words of John F. Kennedy that an error does not become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. So, if a student up to the age of 18 freely wishes to take a test, of course, let them. Otherwise, how you choose your friends, how you love and are loved, and how you live your life are the only tests that you really need to pass. Finally, let us bookend these ideas with a few more words from Albert Einstein. Not everything that counts can be counted, and not everything that can be counted counts. And that was written by me, and that was also misread by me, mistakes and all. If you have any ideas you would like to add to this, or you disagree with me, you can contact us or visit us at nsa-slovakia.com or nsa-education.com. You can also link to us on Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest and LinkedIn. The postscript reads, don't worry, the irony of somebody who prepares students to pass tests, writing an article about the evils of testing in the school system is not lost, at least not on me. Thank you very much for listening. Remember, resistance is victory. Take care.